Welcome everyone to the Fall Maxi 2023. My name is Leanne Doyle and I am joined by Courtney Lewis, who's the president of the DMAW EF Board of Directors. I am also on the Board of Directors and we're also joined by Crystal Poole, the executive administrator of the DMAWF. We'll begin our virtual competition with presentation one, which will be our team from American University. Before the team gets started, I would like to introduce our judges. We have three judges today, Aiden Wheeler from Moore, Les Markman from PMG and Marianne Chan from Fuse Fundraising. Judges, we will let American Team One get started. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we are Team One from American University and our campaign and our marketing plan, it's called Hope for Tomorrow campaign. My name is Adriana. My name is Ghana. My name is Victoria. And my name is Madison. So this is the overview of our presentation. So you have an idea of what we're gonna cover. We have our campaign goal, our audience, then the SWOT analysis of the campaign for the Children's Inn, our strategy outline, and then our financial analysis and the expense budget, and, uh, and finally our creative campaign. Starting with our current state, first we we want to talk about the digital presence. What we've identified is room for improvement, engagement, and reach. Now, and the donor base, where there's limited awareness beyond the local community. For the campaign goal, it is to raise awareness for the children's in an NIH in order to acquire new donors and motivate current donors to keep supporting this cause through various multi-digital channels and direct mail campaigns. So this is the audience segment. We decided on high net worth individuals who can financially support this campaign. And we have a range of generations right now, which is millennials, Gen X, and baby boomers with a profound interest in social causes. And we also want to target current donors and people affiliated with the Children's Inn at NIH so they continue supporting this cause. So we divided um, our segment into a segmentation profile by demographics, values, and lifestyles. Um, as I mentioned before, we have these three generations, uh, male and female with an income level middle to high. And when it comes to values, we... Um, found individuals with compassion and empathy for families facing medical challenge or a strong belief in the power of community support. And when it comes to lifestyle, individuals who are actively involved in community activities and who have an interest in philanthropy and making a positive impact. So we created personas in order for you to understand a little bit of what we're working with. We first created Sarah, who she is 30 years old and millennial, has a stable income with disposable income, and is likely to discover and support causes through digital channels. So that's why we decided that for her, it would be better to communicate with through digital communication channels like Instagram. Then we have Luis, who he is 45 years old, Generation X. He has an established career with a steady income, financial and family responsibilities, and comfortable with both traditional and digital communication channels. And finally, we have Mary. She's 68 years old. She's a baby boomer. And she retired at 67 years old, which is um, the most common age in the DMV area to be retired uh, based on our research. And she has substantial economic power. And since she's not retired, she most likely would engage in philanthropy or activities that would uh, support the community. So for her, the preferred uh, channel would be direct mail and email. We took this into account when it comes to our um, promotion campaign. Based on our segment profiles, we did a breakdown of strategic geographic locations that we could target. We believe that for millennials, such as Sara that you saw in a previous slide, the ideal locations could be urban and suburban areas such as 
downtown Bethesda, Silver Spring, and North Bethesda. Those regions are known for their young professionals and often have a vibrant digital presence. Also proximity to universities like the University of Maryland, College Park could be strategic as these areas are often tech savvy and digitally engaged. And also regions known for technology and startup communities, such as certain parts of Washington DC, which are accessible to Bethesda residents. For Generation X, such as Lewis, we decided to go with family-friendly uh, suburbs, look towards suburbs known for attracting established professionals with families, Potomac, Rockville, parts of Montgomery County fit this demographic, and also cultural and community centers, areas where community events are frequent, and there is a mix of traditional and modern lifestyles, places like Chevy Chase and Gaithersburg could be ideal for this age group. And Lastly, for baby boomers such as Mary, retirement communities and upscale neighborhoods target areas like Leisure World in Silver Spring, which is known for retirement community, and affluent neighborhoods in Bethesda and Chevy Chase. Also, community centers and churches, regions where community centers and churches are central to community life, as these places often serve as a gathering spot for older adults. Moving on to our SWOT analysis, the strengths we've seen, we have identified an established reputation and strong support from the local community, portfolio of success stories, and a dedicated staff of 61 regularly scheduled volunteers. In terms of weaknesses, lack of awareness about the children's in among certain segments, the organization relies heavily on donations, and there's a reliance on volunteers for various functions. For opportunities we've identified, expanding the organization's online presence through digital marketing, opportunities with strategic partnerships, and increasing community engagement through events, volunteer programs, and outreach. For threats, economic uncertainties can impact donor contributions, other nonprofit organizations compete for donations, and potential disruptions due to public health crisis. Our proposed strategy is that through the Hope for Tomorrow campaign, the Children's Inn aims not only to meet immediate fundraising goals, but also lay the foundation for sustained growth, increasing community involvement, and a broader impact in supporting families facing medical challenges. We want to do this for three ways, digital channels, improving online engagement, and increasing digital donations. For direct mail, enhancing the effectiveness of direct and ma direct mail campaigns, and traditional media increasing awareness through traditional media channels. So we decided to have measurable goals. First of all, increase website traffic by 15%, and we will use Google Analytics to monitor this engagement, website visits, and returning visitors. And this can help us determine what is working and what is not. We'll also like to increase social media engagement. Right now, right now the Children's in Instagram has 3,856 followers. And we'd like to increase at least 500 followers each month and use the built-in social media engagement metrics to analyze likes, followers, and reposts in this um, social media app. And then finally, acquiring new donors. We want to expand the donor base by 20%. And we'll, we, we'll do that by tracking current and new donors and focus in this online philanthropists and medical professionals that would help us um, expand this donor base. So next we have our implementation timeline. So the first two months are gonna be working on pre-campaign um, items. So that is developing targeted lists for our direct mail and conducting market research. So months three and four are then gonna focus on the magazine ads. So we're gonna design engaging advertisements and negotiate and secure placements within specific magazines in the DMV area. Next, we're gonna Months five and six are going to work on social media, so developing a content calendar and launching uh, um, campaigns on our social media platforms. Next, seven and eight months are going to be for direct mail, so creating the direct mail content, um, and we're going to put an emphasis on emotional stories of the families supported by the Children's Inn and other um, 
important information about the children's in. Um, and then we're going to distribute the direct mail within that time period. And then months nine and 10, we're hoping to do a virtual event. So we're going to use social media to leverage and create excitement and anticipation for said event um, and engage with attendees and encourage live participation. So now moving on to our financials. So we were given a budget of $100,000. Um, of that $100,000, we spent about $94,000. Um, our revenue for the first year is $131 um, and four hundred um, $131,000. Excuse me. Um, and our two main um, services that generated our net revenue are the direct mail and the magazine. The social media and um, email campaigns didn't call, um, didn't create revenue the first year. So that is why with our prediction of year two with the 20% growth, um, they were able to start generating a little bit more money. And so we were able to raise our net um, income by about $10,000. So for our creative campaign, as mentioned previously, we've decided to go with magazine, um, social media posts, direct mail, and email. We believe that magazines have this in-depth storytelling. They also have a versatility in distribution, so they can be both paper and digital, and they can reach our target audience. In terms of social media posts, um, we believe that they have direct engagement, they build a great community, and they have a potential to go viral, and also they are cost-effective, I've seen by, in our budget. Lastly, direct mail and email, those could be newsletters and updates. Um, it includes direct and private communication with donors. It has measurable results, and it's also cost-effective. In terms of magazine, um, you can see example that we've created here. We did a few table of contents and we would suggest, um, for example, the Sunrise series. Those could be a series of uplifting stories from families created by new beginnings at the inn. Echoes of empathy could be insights from the dedicated staff volunteers who are heartbeat of the inn. Inspirational dialogues, interviews with medical pioneers and thought leaders in pediatric healthcare. Pages of gratitude. Those could be messages of thanks and stories of impact, illustrating the power of generosity. Social media posts. So after a thorough analysis of the children's in at NIH current social media activities, we've gained valuable insights into their existing strategies. We observed that their social media platforms are effectively used to share patient stories. However, based on our analysis, we proposed the following strategic engagement enhancements. So for Facebook, we believe that the content could be engaging narrative from families and children, polls and quizzes on healthcare um, topics to engage donors and people more, live session featuring heartwarming stories and insights from staff and researchers. The audience could be families, donors, and the general public. In terms of Twitter, we decided to go with quick facts about pediatric research, real-time updates from the end, shout outs to community supporters, and again, the audience could be healthcare professionals, donors, and general media. For Instagram, we believe that the content could be vibrant day in the life stories with a creative twist, more in depth behind the scenes content and visually compelling infographics on child health and wellness. And again, the audience could be younger demographic, including potential young donors and volunteers. So for impactful videos, we wanted to go with something less generic and we came up with a few ideas. So the content could be um, through the eyes of patients, thought could, those could be short documentary style videos showcasing a day in the life of a child at the inn, highlighting their personal experiences, challenges, and triumphs. Um, family perspectives, th those could be our home away from home. Videos featuring families sharing their stories about how the inn provided support, comfort, and a sense of normalcy during their child's treatment. Heart to heart could be an intimate conversation between family members discussing the impact of the experience and the role of the inn in, the, in their journey. 
behind the scenes. Those could be show, uh, showcasing videos, the dedication and care of the end staff and volunteers and the difference they make in the lives of the residents. Why I volunteer? Those could be personal testimonials from volunteers highlighting their motivations and the rewarding experience they have at the end. In terms of design, those could be high quality production, emotionally compelling videos with a clear call to action. The platforms that could be used are YouTube, Facebook, Instagram stories, and our target audience could be broad, aimed at general public, potential donors, and online communities. Um, we also decided to go with targeted email campaigns, newsletters, and updates. The content of those could include regular updates on research, patient stories, and how donations are actually making a difference, health tips, insights into pediatric care, and wellness advice for families. The audience of those could include existing donors, subscribers, healthcare community. We also believe it's important to include a short link to a page of the INTS website where followers can read further. Um, direct mail, um, we wanted to go with um, a postcard. The content of that could include a concise and heartfelt message introducing the mission of the Children's Inn and its role in supporting families with children undergoing that treatment at NIH. Uh, there should be a clear call to action, a direct appeal for donations, explaining how these funds are used and the difference they actually make, and some of the additional information that it could include, some ways to get involved. I have to step in right there. Um, it is has been 15 minutes and we are going to have to move on to the question and answer. Um, and so we have now have 10 minutes for the judges to ask any questions of the team and um, you'll have 10 minutes to go and the students you can show your video and judges can ask questions. Okay, I, I drew the uh, short straw here. Um, first of all, well done. Uh, Quick question on the, and maybe I missed it, so I apologize if I didn't get the follow through, but on the magazines, um, were those strictly for PR purposes or were you looking to capture revenue from that? And if so, how would you capture revenue from a magazine ad as part of your strategy? Yeah, so I can kind of talk about this. Can you go to the appendix, please? Um, so here's a whole breakdown of our financials. Um, I used the um, the financial formulas that the Maxi competition gave us. So if we look at magazine, this magazine is not going to be targeted to professionals. It's going to be targeted to potential donors. And so um, we're going to look to do a quantity of 10,000 um, advertisements. And so that's the cost breakdown. So in the end, our first year revenue from magazines is going to be about $600 because um, it goes and it takes into account um, the direct, um, it takes into account the percentage of uh, direct mail house life or house file and then the average gift is about $25 and then I put the formula used right underneath it. Uh, I mean for me I was specifically wondering how does somebody if they're reading this magazine contribute like physically is there something like a QR code or something you'd use that could drive people to a website um, and maybe that's beyond what is required of this. I'm just an old guy with direct mail background who's always looking at how we're going to get the money back. Yeah, I think um, I think I can speak a little bit on this. Um, the idea is to probably put a QR code on the magazine advertisement because that way it is easier to um, easily access, but also putting like a mailing address as well at the bottom. So that way if people are more comfortable, you know, mailing in some like a check or something versus a QR code, depending on um, their demographic, their ge uh, generation, they have different preferences on how they like to donate. So if you're not as tech savvy, there's still that mailing address on the advertisement, but if they are tech savvy, there is the QR code. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, and I can jump in with a question here. Um, first of all, great job. I thought that um, the way you approached your audience selection and the profiling was a really smart way to do that. Um, and overall, I thought the presentation just visually looked really nice. Um, 
My question is, what was something that you found the most challenging as you approached um, this project and how did you overcome some of that or handle it? I think I can jump and give a short answer for us as a younger generation. It's getting harder to target, target um, older demographics. So we had to come up with ideas that would target that demographic. So I know that we could use social media to reach those younger generations, millennials, but we had to think of ideas of how to reach um, baby boomers and Gen X. So come up with postcards and maybe we had a few other ideas of direct mail um, that we didn't get to, but those included some other ideas such as hope bracelets, um, seed paper cards, bookmarks. So kind of email, mailing those to older generation, we thought of kind of that. And then I, I could jump in here as well. I thought you guys did a wonderful job. Of, uh, the presentation visually was, was very good and well organized. Um, a quick question. My background is sort of in the data world and more sort of the audience selection uh, process of direct marketing. Um, could you guys just walk me a little bit uh, through sort of how you decided on the personas that you guys came up with for the children's in at NIH and sort of what your thinking was on audience selection and how you would identify these sort of new prospects to reach out to? Did you use uh, information that you received from the children's in at NIH to sort of determine what their donors look like? Or how did you guys kind of walk through and, and decide on that process? Yeah, I can jump in to this question. I think that when we're um, deciding on our audience segment and basically prospects for donors, we did a lot of background research, not only on the donors of the children's in, but also in general, donors in the DMV area. So we found out that mostly baby boomers because of their leisure and just um, their um, active involvement in philanthropic um, activities, they're more likely to donate in these cases. So that's why we decided to go first with them. But then at the same time, uh, we wanted to reach also younger gener generations um, since I, I can show you the appendix here. Um, so we, this is some of the research that we did that I was talking about. So for example, you can see that, um, this is the annual cost of a comfortable retirement in the district of Columbia, which is pretty high. So these are like very affluent individuals that could eventually, um, donate to this cause. So we thought that that would be, um, a good, uh, segment to target. And um, also when it comes to Gen X and millennials, we thought that uh, creating other types of engagement like social media would also be a good thing. But at the end of the day, we decided to do those three uh, based on our research on how people would eventually um, donate and also how they have this um, purchasing power and the economic ability to, to help this do um organizations. I don't know, Vicky, if you have something else to add on. Yeah. Um, what we looked at too was just like what people who would who are the people that are mainly donating um and what kind of income they might have. We research we did a lot of research on like what their touch points are, what actually drives them into donating. We did a lot on like um how other charities in the past have communicated to this donor base too. Um, and that's how we decided on our personas. I have another question. Um, it's two part. Uh, the first is, well, the question is regarding your social media campaign, which um, I thought you had a, a lot of great ideas in terms of the type of content. Um, was that intended to be an organic or paid or both campaign? Um, I think we would go with paid campaigns for this one. Well, I assume that if it was paid, that was part of the um, the budgeting. And so I guess then my, my question would be, um, it seems then 
for some of the content that would you say that it's more so geared toward lead generation in terms of getting some names and then from there um, soliciting them to get revenue? Similar to Les's question, I'm thinking about um, how, you know, how the revenue will come in and how you actually acquire a new donor. Um, so we, could you elaborate on that? Sorry. Sure, no problem. Um, so if you're, we're doing a paid campaign, then um, will there be like a CTA that goes directly to, to a donation page? Or is it more so for someone to kind of raise their hand and say, hey, I like your mission. Here's my email address. Um, just thinking about how we go from someone seeing the social media ad and then becoming a donor or and or um, if it's just a lead or a supporter that is now on their email list. Right. So I think what we decided to go with um, using Google ads to kind of target um, related, uh, kind of target search queries that are related to pediatric healthcare and also family supporting those during medical treatments. Um, we also wanted to go with um, in terms of content, those could be emotional and compelling storytelling, as I mentioned before. So raising funds um, through clicks and also swipes on Instagram stories, probably using QR codes on stories that could bring um, a donor to a website that ch Children's In already has. So kind of like that. Thank you. Can I also ask, uh, I know, of course, with a lot of multi-channel campaigns, actually the industry sort of calls them like omni-channel today is like another one of those, those buzzwords that people talk about, basically thinking about not only using multiple channels, but kind of interweaving them together and, and potentially doing things like co-targeting your direct mail campaign with a corresponding email follow-up that sort of goes hand in hand with with your direct mail campaign. Did you guys kind of think of any of the, I know obviously you mentioned a bunch of different ideas, the newsletters, uh, email campaigns, uh, different social media things, but any ideas on sort of interweaving the different channels and, and sort of using them off of each other in kind of a co-targeting way? You have just a couple seconds to answer. Um, I think in terms, of, we thought about doing like for direct mail, those could be like um, personalized letters um, and brochures to kind of reach um, audiences who prefer or respond well to physical mail and also um, integrated with online efforts, such as including um, URLs on those um, brochures or QR codes linking to our digital content. I'm gonna go ahead and cut in there. And so it is time for us to wrap up. I would like to thank American University for serving as presentation number one today. I'd like to thank our judges for being with us this morning, Aiden, Les, and Marianne on behalf of the DMAWEF Board of Directors. Thank you so much for serving as judges. American University, you are free to go. Remember that we will be sharing the results of the competition but on Monday. And judges, you may remain in the meeting and turn off your audio and video so you may score the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.